Hello everyone and welcome to the class. David A. Cox here with PCClassesOnline.com and today we're going to be going over our top 10 Windows 8 tricks. Now Windows 8 came out really not that long ago and um, it's had very very mixed reviews. Um, I know that every time we've taught it here with our service um, we have not had nearly as many people for example as those who signed up for the new to Mac classes and uh, some of the other um, some of the other ones. So um, what uh, I'm going to do is show you a whole bunch of different tricks here uh, that you can do with Windows 8. Give me one second here. Let's turn that off. And uh, and just show you how to kind of customize it maybe a little bit better to your liking and uh, go from there. So these tricks are in really no particular order. So uh, hopefully you have a pen and paper for those of you who are who are or who have switched to Windows 8. Now the first trick is probably the most important one of all. For those of you who have been using Windows 8, you know that one of the things they removed was the Start button. You may notice if you're looking at my screen right now that I actually do have it, and there's a way that you can get it back. It's to use an extra little program that does not come with a computer, and if you open up your web browser and go to stardock.com slash products, the name of the product is called Start8. And you can try it for 30 days for free, or you can buy it for $49. But basically, it does what everyone wished Windows 8 came with, which is that it brings back the traditional start menu. So for those of you who missed that, here you go. It's back. Um, so that's a really, really nice feature to be able to bring back. I wish that Microsoft had given you the option to have that instead of making you pay uh, extra money to bring back a feature that they took away but there is at least an option to, uh, to bring it back should you want it. The next trick I want to show you is sometimes people like to run apps side by side. The ability to run two taps, two apps on the same screen, here's how you do it. Um, the one that most people like to have is something like weather. So let's say I want to have weather while also being able to use the desktop at the same time. Here's how you do it. You go to the weather app on the uh, on the main page and now what you're going to do is if you if you know how to close a program in Windows 8 basically the way you do is you put your cursor at the very top of the screen click and drag down but instead of dragging down what you're going to do is you're going to drag it to the left or right and when you do that it'll snap to the side of the screen and so now what I can do is go back and click on desktop and so now I have my desktop over here and I have my weather over here on the left hand side the downside to this is that, unfortunately, I wish that there was abil the ability to resize this so you can make it a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. You will see as I start to just barely make it a little bigger, it just snaps right back or it takes over the entire screen. There really is not a lot of ability to truly customize the look of it. Okay, and that's how you run two apps at the same time. I have a feeling we're going to blow through this class today, so hopefully those of you who are here live have questions, we can get them answered for you. Uh, another feature that a lot of people like to have access to, now let me, right now, let me, oh, you know what? Let me throw this in here. This was not on my list, but I feel like it's something we should go over. Let's say you have two apps open at the same time and you want to close one of them. The way you do it is you put your cursor over here on this bar. You see these three dots right here? You're just going to click and drag it to the left and kind of push it out. Now, technically speaking, that app is still running right now in the background, minimally, but I'm going to show you in a little bit how to end that from running. We'll go there in a little bit. The next trick is we're going to talk about how to group like apps together. So, for example, I want to go to the Windows 8 menu. You'll see here we have a whole bunch of different apps here that I've just downloaded. Um, I don't really use Windows 8 a hell of a lot, but for example, I have a whole bunch of different recipe apps. You might have a bunch of travel apps. And when you first get these, they're all kind of just jumbled together. There's no particular order. So what I want to do is show you how to create categories of these different apps. And the way you're going to do that is if you put your cursor at the very, very bottom right corner, there's a tiny minus symbol and when you do that it kind of pushes back so let's say that I have uh, a group of apps here that I want to categorize 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that group, okay? And when I do that, I get this little pop-up bar down here at the bottom, and you'll see that one of my options at the very bottom left is name group. So in this case, I'm just going to call this group other, click name, and now that category will stay there. And if you want to move any of these apps around, like let's say for example, kayak here should be an other, all I have to do is click, drag, and drop it to whichever slot I want it to go into. I'll move it back since it doesn't really need to go there. Now, as you start to gather more and more applications um, and you start to have them open at the same time, you don't necessarily want to constantly have to go back and forth switching between these different items. So I'm going to show you a really fast way to switch back and forth. And the way you're going to do it is on your keyboard, you're going to hold the Alt key and you're going to tap Tab. And when you do that, you'll see here, I can see all of the applications that I currently have open. Now, if I just kind of hover my cursor over any of these, I'll see a little preview window of what's going on with it. And then to go into it, I can just let go or I can click either way. So if I want to go back and forth between weather and news, I can just click on news. I actually haven't run news in a couple days, so there that goes. Okay. Next, I want to go over something that I mentioned just a minute ago, which was uh, about ending t uh, apps from running in the background. Because as you start to gather more and more and more apps, it is going to start to slow down the computer, although granted not a lot. Um, it is pretty well designed in terms of it will not put a lot of uh, RAM into those uh, apps that are running in the background, and eventually we'll close them out. But if you need better performance, it's better just to close them yourself. Here's how you close apps from running in the background. What you're going to do is take your cursor here, and you're going to put it in the top left corner of the screen, and then just drag down. And so now you can see here, I have all of these windows here. It's basically the same thing as when I was holding Alt and Tab at the same time. Except now what I can do is, let's say I'm kind of done with using the News app. If I want to get rid of it from running, what I can do is right click on it, and I have an option here to hit close. And so that just kind of frees up a little bit of RAM so that the computer can run a little bit more efficiently. Okay, and I can do it for settings here. You can see I had in the background. I'll close that out and really just kind of get it down to what you're, you know, what you're actually using. Uh, let's see here. Next. Ah. If you've been using Windows 8 for a while, you know one of the things that you have access to is something called the Charms Bar, which is down here at the bottom right. And here's where you have things like Search, Share Settings, so if you want to take something, let's say you're on the web and you want to take an image and share it to Facebook, this is one way that you can do it. Uh, of course, a shortcut to get back to the Start menu. Uh, access different devices and settings, of course. If you don't want to have to go back to the bottom right and then pull up so you can see this, uh, there is a fast way to do it. The fast way to do it is you're going to hold the Windows key and tap the letter C, and that will trigger the same action. Okay? That's a little shortcut that's good for you to know. Oh, here's a big one. You know, a lot of times I work with people, and um, for example, we have our little remote support service that we offer people, which, by the way, I might as well throw it out there um, for all of you. Let's say you're on your computer and you have a problem or something like that. One of the services we do offer, and you can get it through PC Classes Online, is a service called Instant Guru. And basically, it's a small application that's on your computer. If you have a problem, you call us, click on this application, and we can take over your computer and help you resolve the issue without you obviously having to bring it in or anything like that. So what you do is you go to our website, go to Instant Guru, and then just click on the version that's right for your computer. So for example, the Windows version, you download it right here. For the Mac version, you download it right here. Okay. And uh, it's using a technology called Team Viewer, which uh, if you're in business and you need to constantly remote into computers, it's a fantastic application. Highly recommend it. But the problem that I've run into before with some clients is that they go and they download it and they don't know where their stuff downloads to, 
which some of you might find silly, but there's a lot of people who don't know how to access their downloads folder. So especially if there's any kids here who are taking this class or, or happen to see this video on YouTube, this, this video is going to be published so that the public can see it. If you have a parent that's using, um, that's using Windows 8, this is a really good trick for them. Just if you're trying to help them with something, it's nice to give them an easy shortcut so that they can access their downloads folder. Here's how you do it. When you're on the desktop screen, you're going to click down here and you're going to open up your file explorer. Okay, now over here you should see a folder called downloads uh, listed under favorites. If you do not see it under favorites, it's uh, going to be probably right around here under libraries or in documents rather is what I meant. So what you're going to do here is you're going to right click on this folder called downloads. When you do that, you're going to get a whole bunch of different options here. And the one that you're going to want to do is go down here to send to and you can either, I'd probably recommend doing a desktop shortcut. So what that just means is now when you look on my desktop, there's a little folder here called downloads and anything that I download, whether it's through email or through the web, that's going to be the place where it's going to go. All right. So that's a, a really easy way to get access to that information. Next, let's see, what's next on our list? Ah, next we're going to talk about uninstalling apps. You know, in the past you had to go to Control Panel and Add Remove Program, so there's an easier way to do it now if it's something that you um, if it's something you downloaded uh, through the App Store. So the way you're going to do it, it's actually very simple, is let's say I want to get rid of games right here, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on the app and at the very bottom, you'll see here, we have this little menu bar that popped up. Here's the option to uninstall. It's just a really, really easy way um, to uninstall apps. So it's a hell of a lot less hassle than before. I'm not going to do that. Next, I want to show you how to make some of these larger apps. Like, for example, right here I have... ESPN, okay, sports. I don't really care about sports, so maybe I might remove it, but sometimes you just want to make one of these little tiles smaller. And you'll notice that some of mine are larger and some of them, some of them are smaller. As you start to get more and more apps, you may want to go to the smaller version just so that you have more room. So the way you do it is very similar. What you're going to do is right click on that app, and you'll see here that another option here is smaller. So when I do that, it converts it from kind of a half size down to a quarter size, or full size down to a half size, rather. Sorry about that. And next, one of the things you're going to find, you know, you have all these interactive tiles here. And uh, one of the ones you may have seen here at the very beginning was, uh, if you caught it, at the very beginning, I turned people off. The reason why is, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of coworkers or people kind of hanging over your shoulders, um, you don't want all of your information out in the forefront necessarily so that it's, you know, popping up with all of these different, like here over on the right hand side, you'll see here, I have photos going through. Now I have no naughty photos, obviously, on my computer, but, um, or at least if I do, they're very, very well hidden. But the point is, is that you don't want to have someone looking at your screen and then suddenly, whoopsie, something maybe not quite so inappropriate pops up. Here is how you disable that feature. Uh, it's very similar to what we were just going over. You're going to right click on it and you'll see here that there is now an option called turn live feed off. And when you do that, it goes to kind of a very neutral graphic. So you're not going to see any kind of preview images. Some of these things you may like, for example, people who use Twitter, it'll show you, you know, recent tweets that you've received or interactions that you've had with people. So that's it for our top 10 Windows 8 tricks. What we're going to do at this point is for those of you who are here live, we're going to turn it over to you and take your questions. Um, for those of you who are seeing us on YouTube, I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and check out our service. We have a free 30-day trial that you can check out by going to pcclassesonline.com and you can see kind of what it's all about. And uh, it's a great way to learn your computer, your iPhone, your iPad, and be able to interact with teachers like myself and get, get those questions answered. So hope you've all enjoyed this. Let's get to the, your questions for those of you who are here live.